long ago, in a city of Galilee called Nazareth, there lived a young woman named Mary. The Lord sent an angel to her. Do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. You will give birth to a son. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the baby will be called the Son of God. I will do what I will do what God asks me to do. Oh, how my soul praises the Lord, how my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he took notice of his lowly servant girl, and from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one is holy, and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and the haughty ones. He has brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful. For he made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. The Christmas story speaks to human weariness and a people that desperately need hope and assurance. Mary, who heard the humanly impossible news that she, as a virgin, was going to conceive the Son of God, she was assured that nothing will be impossible with God. From the book of Luke, chapter 1, yeah. verse 37. This evening, we're going to hear a few personal stories about hope in the midst of weariness. Good evening. My name is Jeff, and yeah, as we mentioned, we're speaking tonight a little bit of theme about weariness. And with the pandemic going on, I'm sure we all have a sense of weariness going on. I know for me, it's getting halfway to the store and remembering my mask is in the car. And I'm weary about that, but we're not gonna, I'm not going to talk too much about that tonight, but there's other weariness that goes on even in the pandemic. Just if that wasn't, if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic, we'd still be living life and struggling with different things. And, and we all struggle with different, different stuff. One is possibly our jobs. You know, maybe we don't like what we're doing or maybe we feel that we should be doing something different. Maybe we're struggling with our schooling. Uh, some of us are raising kids. Some of us are maybe struggling even with our relationships, with friends, with our loved ones, our family. Life goes on and, and we do struggle with that weariness. And it's hard. We wonder what to do. I think of Hebrews 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's pretty amazing that... Uh, no matter what's going on with our lives, our Savior is there and, and He's consistent. It got me thinking about this, uh, I don't know if it's a poem or what it is, and I'm sure most of you know it, and, and uh, it seems kind of funny to speak about it, but, you know, it's, it's about that story of walking down the beach and you're with, with Jesus, and things are going good, you're throwing the stick in the water and the dog's chasing it, life is good. And then we go through hard things in our lives and and struggles, and we wonder, why is it so hard? And we look back, and we only see one set of footprints in the sand, where there used to be two, and we say, God, why did you leave me? And yet, that's when God says, I didn't leave you. That's when I picked you up. That's when I carried you. How amazing is that, that we have a Savior that's willing to pick us up and carry us, and we think that we're on our own, that we're all by ourselves. And in fact, that's when God has us the closest to him. 
So that's pretty, pretty amazing that we're in a situation like that. So if you find yourself in a state of weariness, you know, feel free to touch base with any one of us from Res. Um, we'd love to talk to you. Love to have you come out and, and share the good news with you and know that you're not alone, no matter how weary you feel. Jack, and I'm the direct, youth director here at Res Church. And I just wrote um, something. Yeah. When I'm older, it'll all make sense. Just another year, and I'll have it all together. If this wasn't in my way, I could. If this anxiety would just leave, I would be able to. And I'm stuck in this rut, praying for an end to these anxious thoughts that won't stop roaming around in my mind, wondering what could be and thinking about what was, trying to hold on to the fleeting future while I release the brokenness of the past. But I'm being tugged into this limbo as I watch everyone pass me by. And then regrets begin to fill my head, and I wonder if I'm on the right path. But I always felt this calling. I always loved this road. But I'm feeling a deep sadness, and sometimes I just want to go home. But then in these silent moments, when it's hard to breathe, I think about the Jesus who died for me. I know that he is with me in my anxious thoughts, my worries, and my tears. I keep his word close to me to remind myself of his deep and endless love. And sometimes I think of Noah, one of my youth from California. He lived his life seeking adventure and loving the Lord. And although he has gone to heaven, I can still remember him say that even if it seems hopeless, one day it will be okay. So I'll give my heart to Jesus each and every day. And I know that even in this dark hour, God has made a way.
shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope the weary soul rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Now Mary was engaged to a man named Joseph. The angel appeared to him in a dream and said, Do not be afraid. Mary has been chosen to be the mother of God's son. Do not be afraid to take her as your wife. She will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So Joseph believed. He believed the angel and took Mary to be his wife. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. Joseph traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee, and he took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. Welcome to this field outside Bethlehem. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid. I bring you great news that will be of great joy to all people. Today Today the Messiah, the Savior, the Lord, has been born in Bethlehem, the city of David. You will find him wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those whom God has pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village Bethlehem. <coughs> Please join in singing this carol, Angels We Have Heard on High.
Christmas story speaks to human weariness and to people that desperately need hope and assurance. The shepherds, who had long given up hope in human governments and institutions to bring peace to the world, were assured, today there has been born for you a savior. Let's hear another personal story about hope in the midst of weariness. From the lyrics of O Holy Night, it is written, a thrill of hope the weary soul rejoices. How does the gift of Jesus bring hope into my weariness? I've sang those lyrics many times, but probably never gave it much thought. As a child, I was excited about Christmas. I think I knew the real reason for Christmas, but not maybe with the same sense of anticipation and excitement as those crazy carpets we received the one year. I also have memories of going with my dad to get a tree out in the backwoods of the farm. We didn't look for the best tree. It would usually be a tree that was growing too close to another tree. This meant that it would only be good on one side where the branches had room to grow. We always stood up, stuck our tree in the corner and so it didn't really matter. I totally agreed with my dad. I didn't want to cut down a good tree. Later in life, when I was married and had a family of my own, we always had an artificial tree. One year I noticed there was a tree in our yard that was not doing so well. I thought it would make a good Christmas tree. I brought in the tree and we decorated it. It wasn't perfect, but it was real and I liked it. When I wrote this, God revealed to me that it is I who has become this artificial Christmas tree. Over the years I've been putting energy into something that is artificial. I've become wary of hiding my flaws, wary of what others might think, wary of what this world offers. I recently learned that my life had become unmanageable, not realizing how this has been wearing me down both physically and mentally. I've become this person behind a mask. I've forgotten who I am. I'm encouraged when I read Psalm 139, 14. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. The gift of Jesus brings hope into my weariness. He brings hope into your weariness. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. This is the Jesus who came down in a lowly manger to meet me where I'm at, the per imperfect Christmas tree with the flawed and missing branches. This is the tree he wants to adorn and splendor. Isaiah 61.10 says, I am overwhelmed with joy in the Lord my God, for he has dressed me with clothing of salvation and draped me in a robe of righteousness. We do not have to attain to a higher level. As I ponder the birth of our Savior, this Jesus is the someone who brings us hope. This is the assurance we all need. His light is shining brighter than ever, and this gives, me, gives my weary soul a thrill of hope. Let's sing together two verses of A Little Town of Bethlehem.
of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. I don't know about you, but I love routine, schedules, being prepared, and being organized for all the unknowns. However, as we've all recently experienced, life doesn't always work that way. And obstacles and challenges enter our lives, and we don't always have the answers or the next steps. In our last year, our family has faced some health and mental health challenges that have often crowded my mind with worries. And as I've puzzled through all the variables and all the unknowns and all the possible outcomes or solutions to fix or help, it has really led me to a place of extreme weariness. The worries that I have given so much time to have often been stemmed from a place of fear and fear of being out of control and not knowing what the future holds. There's a scene in the Charlie Brown Christmas movie that reminds me of the worries and fears that I've held onto and has led to my weariness. Charlie Brown gets frustrated on the stage as he's preparing for the play and acknowledges that everything he does leads to disaster. And then he finally says, is there anyone who knows the meaning of Christmas? And it leads to his friend Linus, 
He moves to center stage and the spotlight is on Linus and he says, I have an answer, Charlie Brown. And Linus recounts the birth story of, Christmas, of Christ at Christmas. And he does this while holding tightly his blanket, his security blanket. He holds the blanket as tightly as I have held to my sense of control. And then he recites the message from the angels to the shepherds. And they say, fear not, we bring tidings of great joy. At this point, Linus lets go of his blanket and is enveloped in telling the story and the true accounts of Jesus coming to earth to meet us where we are at. Jesus knows my weariness. And if I were to throw down my worries and my need for control, just like Linus threw down his blanket, I would find rest. God promises that we can find rest in him. He is in control, and he has a good plan for our lives. As Christmas approaches, I'm reminded to seek him by spending time with him, spending time with Jesus daily, and that will bring rest to me and will allow me to let go of my worries and that desire to control every situation. So I will rest and I will hope for a future that is filled with peace, love, and joy. So what's making me weary is I think there's a heightened anxiety, fatigue, tension in the world, and never know stepping into a situation when you're going to step on a landmine or something's going to become escalated or heightened beyond what I think it needs to be, just because of that anxiety and tension that's, that's out there and around. The hope of Jesus helps me in that, in that I feel like I can have a confidence. I know I can have a confidence that there's a future that's planned, um, that there's, he's in control. And so uh, I can focus on the present and what the present moment needs and let go of trying to control or manipulate the future or worrying and trying to figure all those things out. I can stay in the present, listen, be obedient, give the moment what it needs, and then move on to the next one. John 4 on love reminds me of Corinthians 13. We're not to be clanging bells. We are to be mirrors of God's love. Love believes the best. It is patient and kind and hopeful. Love gives and gives. It's not envious, boastful, arrogant, or rude. It's, it's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrong doing, but rejoices in truth. Love is God's pure light and lasts forever. 1 John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love. Not that we have loved God, but he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also are to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit, and we have seen and testify 
that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in the love abides in God, and God abides in him. The word of the Lord. something like this. Not being able to find a home in which to stay, Mary and Joseph found themselves in some sort of stable. It was in Bethlehem that Mary gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him <laughs> snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available to them. The shepherds found Mary and Joseph the baby lying in the manger, and after seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened, and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were amazed. But Mary kept these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks. Glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard. It was just as the angel had told them. Would you join with us and let's sing together Silent Night? Silent Night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Sleep. 
journeyed around to the various stations tonight, you've heard all sorts of stories based on that one line out of a holy night. A thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices. The Christmas story speaks to our human weariness and a people that desperately need hope. Mary who heard the humanly impossible news that she as a virgin was going to give birth to the Son of God. She heard the message that nothing will be impossible with God. And Joseph, who was struggling with the news of the conception of Mary's in Mary's womb, he was not the father. He was assured that which is begotten in her is of the Holy Spirit. And the shepherds who had given up hope in human governments and institutions for bringing peace to the world were assured today has been born for you a Savior. Finally, finally, an assurance that the world needs so desperately to hear a thrill of hope a weary world rejoices we are all weary are we not how does the gift of Jesus bring hope to your okay. weariness we sincerely hope that tonight you could challenge with that message over this season that you would consider it again for yourself afresh how does Jesus meet my weariness uh -huh. Let's sing together uh -huh. the third verse. Uh -huh. sing. Uh -huh. sing. Uh -huh. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus. And just as these candles and these flickering flames remind us that you are the light of the world, that you dispel the darkness, may each of us recognize to Jesus that you can dispel the darkness that we carry amidst the weariness that surrounds us. For each one here, may that light shine forth. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his deep and abiding peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.